Welcome, my name is Alice and today we're going to explore a small tutorial on the pose commonly called Wild Thing or Kamat Karasana. And so Wild Thing is a really interesting pose because it's got some common challenges for people. Um, wild Thing is uh, both an arm balance as well as, uh, as well as a pretty big back bend. And so some of the common things that I see people have challenges with is the first is shoulder alignment. So we'll look at that today. And the second one is to remember how powerful our legs are and how supportive they can be in this pose. And then the last and the third thing is to learn how to move from the core of the body, from the heart, rather than from the head first. So with those three simple things, hopefully you'll learn how to do a more effective wild thing today. So the first pose that we'll explore in order to understand shoulder integration integration is side plank pose. We'll do side plank prep to begin. So you can come onto your mat and place yourself into tabletop pose first so that your hands are beneath your shoulders and your knees are beneath your hips. Now pivot your right foot out towards the side, extend your left leg back, and then come into a variation of side plank. Now Notice your right hand and just make sure that your hand is actually facing forward so that the crease of the wrist is parallel with the front edge of your mat. Now one thing that starts to happen is people start to come into wild thing and they just try and crank themselves back. But one important shoulder alignment is uh, three simple words, which is to push, lift, and then turn. So from the heart, you want to push through your arm bones into the earth and then get a lift. It's almost like you want to create some more space in the shoulder joint as you lift. And then from that space, you can turn. Okay. Now coming into it from uh, side plank without the modification of the leg, same thing. From tabletop pose, come into high plank, roll onto the edge of your foot, and then hand. You see, if I don't do anything, I'm kind of collapsing and dumping in the shoulder. So you want to extend from the heart and really push through the arm and then lift and get some space and then you can do a little bit of a turn. And place your hands back down onto the floor. We'll try the other side. And coming from tabletop pose, pivot onto your left knee, extend your right leg back and then open out towards the side. You can look down at your arm, make sure that the hand is facing forward first. Push lift and turn. We'll try it from Vashisthasana. Coming into plank pose, roll onto the edge of your foot. From the heart, push, lift, and then a little bit of a turn. And then you can come on back down. And so that's the integrative shoulder alignment. Essentially what you wanna do when you do that push, lift and turn is the shoulder blades or the scapulae will come more fully onto the backside. And then when the shoulder blades are supporting, then you've got lots of space in your chest to start to open up. So bear that in mind. Now the second challenge that people have is not using their legs. And so to explore that, we'll come into Setu Bandhasana or small bridge. Come and lay onto your back and walk your feet in so that the heels are just right in front of your sitting bones. Now anchor your feet towards the floor and without coming up quite yet, just simply push your feet and see how your pelvis already wants to lift. So anchor your feet down even more and then as you push your feet in the floor, allow the hips to respond by lifting up. And we'll just move in the leg motion a few times so as you exhale, gently lower your pelvis back down towards the floor. Inhale to ground your feet. Let your hips respond by lifting up and then the ribs lift and then the chest will lift towards your chin. Exhale, lower back down. Good, one more time. Use your feet, use your legs. Okay, good. And come on back up. So people often forget how powerful the legs are and how supportive they can be in backbends. And so that's tip number two to bring you into wild thing pose. And then the last one is to learn how to lead from the core of the heart rather than in the head. 
Um, when we move into wild thing, I think just because the eyes are on our head, people tend to like to, we, we like to look where we're going. And so we end up thrusting the head back. But what that'll do is lift your chin up, it'll crank your neck, and it actually really fires up the sympathetic nervous system. So it puts you into almost a fear place um, rather than an, a place of expansion. And so we move from the chest and then everything else will follow. And we'll explore this in Anjayanasana with a twist. And so you can take a bent knee lunge, step your left foot forward, right knee back. Walk your right fingertips out towards the side and then left hand to the space of your heart. And this is kind of a nice pose to do it in too because you can do the push, lift and turn with your bottom hand. So push, lift and turn. And then that will start to open out through your chest and through your sternum. And then as this part of your body opens, then let the head follow. You'll see if I don't do it that way and I just take my head back, then the shoulder starts to thrust forward, my voice has changed, and there is not very much space, spaciousness here. And so once you've gotten that beautiful arc of the spine, you can choose to bend your back knee, reach your arm back and hold onto your foot. And then the same thing applies. You've got something to hold on to now, so that's more support. Draw your chest up. Take two breaths. Releasing gently the foot, and then the heart, and then the head. We'll switch sides. Walk your left hand out, right hand to your chest. Push, lift, turn. Leading with the heart. Head will follow. And the option to open up through the quad by bending your back knee and grab a hold of the foot. And take about four or five breaths. And then release your foot and come back in. Okay, good. So those are the three pointers. Shoulder integration, using your legs, and then leading with your heart. And so we'll explore a wild thing pose now. And there's two common ways to come into it. I alternate between both. I think there's great, um, great strategies to learn in both, as well as both offering great benefits. And so the first one we'll come into is from Vashistasana or from side plank. So you can set yourself up well. I'm gonna go right side first. So you can weight your right hand in the outer edge of your right foot, step your feet together, shoulder integration, push, lift, turn using the strength of my legs to lift up through my hips. I'm going to take one hand to my heart, step the top leg back, and then use the power of my legs to elevate up through my pelvis, lift up through the heart, and then curl back. We come out the same way, so heart lifts first. Use the power of your legs to help you back down, and then unwind the shoulder. Okay, we'll try the other side. Vashistasan, left side. Shoulder integration, push, lift, and turn. Power the legs, back foot steps back. Use your legs, lift up through the hips. Hand to heart, lead from the heart, and then curl back. Unwinding, heart, legs, shoulders. Come on down. Okay, so that's how you get into it from side plank. Now the other common way is from downward facing dog. And so let's explore that one. First start by coming into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now because there's so much going on in this pose, it's really important to be mindful right from the start. So in down dog, you have the opportunity here to really ground through your hands already. So here you press, press, press in towards the floor to find strength and stability. Shift your weight over to your right foot. Inhale, lift your left knee up. Now open your leg out to the side, bend your knee and stack your hip. You can let your heel weight down towards your right bum cheek. Make sure that the core body is stable. And then peer underneath your right armpit. You want to landmark your foot, landmark where you want the foot to land, and then slowly drop it back. Okay, now this is the place where people just kind of thrust themselves into it, so take your time. Shoulder integration. Use your strong legs, lead up from the heart, 
and then curl yourself back. Coming out mindfully, heart, feet, shoulders, downward facing dog. One more side, reach your right leg up. Open up through the hip, bend your knee. Landmark your foot and landmark the floor. Let those two points meet. Take your time, shoulders. Push, lift, turn. Power of the legs to power the hips. Heart leads the way, head follows. And then coming out, heart, feet, shoulders, downward facing dog. The knees to the floor. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully those tips and strategies will help you find more fluidity and freedom in your wild thing posts. Namaste.